Mr. Luban for five minutes. Is it on now? Okay. Mr. Chairman, honorable committee members, I'd like to thank you for inviting me to testify here today. Uh, I'm a law professor who specializes in legal ethics, and I expect that that's the reason that I was asked to uh, come and testify. I want to start by recalling for you um, an episode from Jack Goldsmith's memoirs. Mr. Goldsmith, as you know, headed the Justice Department's Office of Legal Counsel in 2003 and 2004. When he joined the office, he reviewed uh, the well-known memos uh, written by Mr. Yu that uh, Chairman Conyers referred to earlier. Um, in the memoirs, he describes the, uh, the uh, August 1, 2002 memo, which was written for civilian interrogators, uh, in a very striking way. He calls it a golden shield. And what he meant by golden shield was that it reassured interrogators that the tactics they were using were legal. And Mr. Goldsmith found himself in the tough position of withdrawing that Golden Shield memo and the other for military interrogators, the other Golden Shield memo. He did not withdraw them because he was politically at odds with Mr. Yu. Uh, he was on the same side as Mr. Yu. He withdrew them because, in his words, they had, quote, no foundation in prior OLC opinions or in judicial decisions or in any other source of law. The golden shield turned out to be made of thin air. Interrogators were misled, and detainees may have suffered cruel and illegal treatment because of these memos. Now, specifically, what was it that was wrong with the golden shield? Well, first, it claimed that inflicting pain isn't illegal unless the pain reaches the level of organ failure or death. It claimed that enforcing laws against authorized interrogators is unconstitutional, and it claimed that you can justify torture as a form of self-defense. It's easy to see that under these standards, practically anything goes. The trouble was that none of this was actually the law. The Golden Shield ignored Supreme Court precedents, it misrepresented sources, and it pulled the organ failure definition out of a Medicare statute. Um, Mr. Chairman and honorable committee members, when a government lawyer writes a Golden Shield, it has to meet the gold standard. We should be confident that the lawyer is describing the law as it really is, not the law according to the lawyer's own pet theories, and not the law as the client would like it to be, no matter who the client is. Playing the law straight is the lawyer's basic ethical obligation. Uh, I'd propose two principles for a government lawyer who's writing a legal opinion. First, the opinion should say the same thing that it would, even if the lawyer thought that the client wanted just the opposite of what he knows that the lawyer or the client actually wants. Um, that guarantees that you aren't tailoring the opinion to reach some predetermined result. And second, the opinion should be able to stand the light of day. Now, obviously, before opinions are publicized, some will have to have sensitive intelligence information about sources or whatever redacted out. But there is absolutely no reason for an opinion interpreting the Constitution or a statute to be a state secret. Now, what I'm proposing here is nothing novel. Playing the law straight is traditional legal ethics. There's a common misperception that lawyers are always supposed to spin the law in their client's direction. That is simply untrue. It is true that in a courtroom, lawyers are supposed to argue the interpretation of the law that most favors their client. The lawyer on the other side argues the opposite, and the judge who hears that strong case put strongly by both sides can reach a better informed decision. But matters are completely different when a lawyer is giving a client advice about what the law means. Now there is nobody arguing the other side, and there is no judge to sort it out. That is why legal ethics rules require that a lawyer advisor give an independent and candid opinion of what the law really requires, even if it's not what the client wants to hear. Lawyers sometimes have to say no to clients, and in its prouder days, OLC lawyers have said no to presidents of the United States. Government and lawyers have an awesome responsibility. OLC opinions bind the entire executive branch. No one elected its lawyers to do secret rewrites of the law, and that is a reason why those lawyers, more than others, have to be faithful to the law. Otherwise, the executive branch is governed by secret law written by activist lawyers instead of by Congress, and it's governed by a secret constitution and not the constitution that was written by the framers. 
Now, I don't want to single out only Mr. Yu's opinions. In my written testimony, I explained that other government lawyers have written opinions on detainee treatment that also fall far short of the gold standard. I believe this committee can do a great service by hearing testimony from the lawyers who wrote them and the military and CIA officers who relied on them to sort out the damage that these memos have done. I thank you. I thank you, and I know. Uh